Hi, family. It's great to be back with you. And we're moving on to another letter. We completed um, prayer letter number 53. And the one we're moving on to now, let me show you it. It is prayer letter number 45. And it is called Radical Faith. You read that for yourself. Okay, I wanted to say too, even though I may be sharing to 10, 15, 20 people, not sure how many, doesn't matter how many, I would like you to regard what I'm sharing as though I'm sharing to just you personally. I'm going to try to make um, my sharing as conversational as possible so that you are relaxed and I'm relaxing. It's not that you're listening to some lecture or sermon. <laughs> not in the least bit. All right, so we're going to get started. Let's go. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you very much for these moments we have of sharing for this season because really that is what it is. Please, Father, continue to, to bless what he shared both as I reread what he wrote so many years ago and as my listeners um, follow. So be with us now for Christ's sake. Amen. Okay, you know there's purpose in everything. Mm -hmm. So, the, the lead text, I'm sorry I have to be looking down some things because obviously you can't memorize this whole thing. You don't have any teleprompter or whatever you call that. And the lead text was Matthew 21, 21, 22, which says, But also if you shall say unto this mountain, Be thou moved, and, and be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. And all things, whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believe ye shall receive. Matthew, right, that's a very powerful text, you know. Some people twist it up a little bit, though, but anyhow. So I have, dear friends, the excitement is definitely mounting as I draw to a close. Actually, this letter was written in 2008, and I was written as I draw to a close. I have to laugh all the time because the close kept being like the horizon, getting further and further away. Um, so I begin by saying, well, let me skip up a part here, and I say... What is quite clear is that there can be quite a, a chasm between talking about faith and actually exercising it. This is a notable gem which links faith and the prayer. It says prayer is the key in the hand of faith to the, the, which unlocks the storehouse of heaven. Some of you I'm sure know that quotation. Yes, so, so I say now, it seems as though I have been able to conduct business with heaven's storehouse and Christ, the heavenly merchantman, has not reneged on his promises. In Revelation 12, 14, Jesus says, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich. That gold represents our faith. I do not need to win the lottery, not at all. Let me begin by sharing with you, and I believe I shared this already, so there are some people who are listening who would have heard this, so you could just listen again. <laughs> Let me begin by sharing a point which I wrote in 1980. Though I did not put a date on it, it is dated in a sense because I signed it as Nola Sargent, my maiden name. That I could still find that old notebook is amazing, since things often seem to elude me. More amazing would be the lyrics in view of my incredible journey. A case of dramatic irony, maybe. At either 22 or 23 years old, I wrote that poem from a purely theoretical perspective, <laughs> um, of course. However, God, the omniscient audience, knew that I would be given the opportunity to have those words transposed into a living testimony. Whoa, talk about orchestration. All right, let me see if I can get through it before I am cut off. Faith, to believe implicitly when darkness is ahead and the way seems blurred, to jump when there's no bridge in sight, confident that all will be right, to follow when you're not sure where you're heading, to obey impulsively when logic cannot give the answer, to forge ahead physically alone, but with the assurance that God is there to wait, to wait for the sun to shine when all predictions indicate a rainy day, to place a pot on the stove even though the cupboard is bare, sightless to see, 
hopeless to hope to give from your last meager um, store of grain of love of peace knowing that all will replenish 100 will be replenished 100 fold and your faithful act would have ignited a soul to blaze forth God's power to hundreds untold. Now, the sergeant I have here in 1980 or 81, so I'm going to have to stop here and we'll continue in the very next note. Interesting letter. Please stay with me. Bye bye.